Good, ap Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I'd like to welcome you today to our Rotary meeting here on November 22nd, the week of Thanksgiving. And President Linda is with family down in Florida getting ready to celebrate the Thanksgiving holidays. So without any further ado, because we have a very, very busy schedule, I am going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and then the four-way test. And then Miss Cindy Kane will be coming up to lead us in the invocation. So if you would join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Hello, Miss Cindy. Hello, Steve. How are you? Good. Good nice to see, to see you. you. Thanks for having me. Fellow Rotarians, please bow your heads. God, we thank you for the blessing and joy of service above self. Thank you for those who are gathered with us today, especially Olivia, as she shares her mission at the Great Lakes Trail Council. Bless Olivia and the work that she does. Bless our fellow Rotarians near and far who continue the work of making the world a better place. Help us to recognize the many ways you provide for us. In tough times, comfort us and protect us. Bless this food and those who have prepared it. Amen. Thank you, Cindy. You may be seated. So our greeter uh, this afternoon, or this morning, this afternoon, because they coincide, is Dan O'Connell. Is Dan in the room or is he coming? Okay. So this is uh, the beginning of the festivities with Thanksgiving arriving in two days. And it's always such a, uh, a happy time in that we get to gather with families and friends and loved ones. And I love the, the uh, almost like the purity of what Thanksgiving represents because President Lincoln was the president that, uh, that called for this to be a national holiday. And so as you gather with uh, friends and family, um, I know it's going to be a very, very rich time as we, uh, we count our blessings. Uh, Dan, you are our greeter today. Who do we have? Well, we have no visiting Rotarians. I don't think I'm going to visit them. Uh, we do have a couple of guests. Uh, Steve, we have a guest. That will be a picture of Jim. He's with musical fingers. Yeah, and in fact, why don't, you, why don't you come up for a minute, real, real. Many of you may remember Cottrell. He was here uh, just a bit ago. I'm going to let you introduce the others, and I'm going to have him just sh share something. Well, I've got one other. Uh, Katie Miller has her daughter. Casey Miller. From Florida, right? All right, welcome. Well, thank you. Um, I've asked Cottrell to come and share because there's something exciting that is happening here in early December down at the Civic Theater, and uh, I wanted him to be able to share. Many of you recall that last January, he was a guest speaker and talked about uh, the program that he does with children who have disabilities. So, Cottrell, good to see you. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everyone. Peace be with all of you on this beautiful, beautiful day. Last year, you graciously allowed me to speak about Hearts of Music to you, my little nonprofit special needs orchestra. And I thank you again once more for allowing me to speak again briefly. Hearts for Music also received a very generous duration from your Rotary Foundation of $1,000, which was Steve Buey's parting gift to us as he stepped down from his post as president. So thank you so very much for your kind generosity for my special needs orchestra. So I got some exciting news for us. Hearts for Music finally has enough street cred and capital to throw our first ever fundraising gala this Christmas at the Civic, uh, Akron Civic Theater on Tuesday, December 6th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. 
7.30 uh, p.m. So market calendars, Akron Civic Theater, Tuesday, December 6th, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. I encourage you to come because for the first time anywhere in the world, our gala will feature disabled kids and adults, and adults ages 8 to 80, performing with professional musicians, specifically the Akron Symphony Quartet. So this is quite literally history in the making. In addition to these world-class musicians playing with our special needs musicians, we also have a highly acclaimed secret musical guest that will be joining as well. So can you all keep a secret? <laughs> we have the joy of performing with the Summit, Ar uh, Summit Choral Society under the direction of Shara Kokolia, who's coming to perform and sing with us. So we're really excited for that. So I am so freaking happy. <laughs> and I praise our Jesus for make, helping to make this happen. I started Hearts for Music to prove that given love, patience, and the right tools, even the most profoundly handicapped person in the world, can missing toes and fingers can create music, and not just create it, but perform it beautifully with professional musicians on a world stage. An exciting future is coming, courtesy of Paul Jarrett, the executive director of the Akron City, and who is a Rotary member. Yeah, Paul so he and I are cooking up a plan to have the entire Akron Symphony perform with the Hearts for Music uh, group and kids and adults sometime in 2024 or sooner, God willing. The entire symphony. And I want you to reflect for a moment what that would mean for the self-esteem of those kids and adults. This is integration and acceptance on a completely new and unprecedented level. So in closing, I understand that some of you may not be able to come to the gala in person, but I dare to humbly ask for your help in spreading the word and consider donating your hard earned money to our nonprofit program to help us reach more families in Northeast Ohio and beyond. I'm also pleased to announce that St. Bernard in downtown Akron last week gave us the green light to be a summit in Akron base to reach out to families here in the area for rehearsals beginning in 2023. Our website is www.heartsformusic.org. Please consider donating to us and thank you so much for having me and for all that you and your lovely Rotary Club has done for my little special needs orchestra. God bless you. Thank you. And I just wanted to say that uh, Cottrell and Paul and I had breakfast together about three weeks ago. And uh, we are exceptionally fortunate to have Paul as part of our Rotary Club. He is such an innovator and such an out of the box thinker that in order to bring some of the Akron Symphony together with, uh, with Cottrell's group, and truly it is the first time ever having disabled kids with disabilities perform musically with an orchestra. This is way cool, people. I mean, way, way cool. And if you ever get the chance, if you, if you can make it to that event, but to watch these children being able to play and to see the joy in, in and on their faces um, because they feel that they're making a very meaningful impact and touch. So. Uh, Katrell, thank you very, very much. Um, do we have any other announcements um, that anyone would like to make? Miss Sandy, please do. It's good to see you. So last week I mentioned that the Kenmore Alliance was asking Akron Rotary to decorate a window on Kenmore Boulevard. We are moving forward, fingers crossed, with this project. Uh, I can't tell you right now what day we're going to decorate or what we need, but we're so close. So if you just watch, uh, we'll send out an announcement through Club Runner, but we're really hoping Cindy Kane is helping a ton. She went and looked at the window, So, and I know you did this last year. We did. So we just have to figure out when we can have access and exactly what we're going to do, and then we'll put a call out and hopefully between all of us, we can get the decorations that we need and a couple more hands to help us. Um, the kicker is it has to be done by December 1st. So uh, if you're willing to help, it will be a quick turnaround. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sandy. David Hall, uh, 
Come on up, brother. <laughs> You're quick. So I <clears throat> wanted to thank uh, those that were able to make it out last Wednesday. We went to the Akron Food Bank, and um, they had a, a whole bunch of uh, high school students show up. So we let them handle the frozen turkeys, and we went back, and we filled 988 bottles of soap. And uh, we going to provide 34,580 hand washes. Um, <clears throat> they also shared with us when we finished that they had gone out to their website and put out on what they call the menu that we had filled, you know, 988 bottles and they put it out there for pantries to, to uh, claim. And by the time we put it out there and before we left, it had already all been claimed. So um, very important that we did that. So thank you. Thank you, David. Appreciate that. Um, Karen, I know you and I spoke just briefly before the meeting, but could you just give us a, a very short synopsis on the new slate of officers and the vote? Uh, you can come here or you can do it from there, whatever works best for you. Thank you. Um, six. Six. The slate of officers has been out. Thank you for everyone that has been getting them back to me. Um, after I picked up what we had here today, um, tomorrow I'll be sending out a reminder to everyone that has not. So if you don't get an email from me tomorrow, you, I have your ballot. Um, so, and then we will ratify that at the annual meeting on December 6th, along with our bylaws. So even if you can just come virtually, uh, we need half of our membership to be here at the beginning of our annual meeting on December 6th, please. Thank you, Karen. And yes, we do need half of our membership in order to ratify uh, the new members that would be serving uh, in leadership positions. So keep that in mind, December the 6th, and good news as well. Mark your calendars. Tuesday, December the 20th, we're going to be having another Christmas dinner here. And uh, that should prove to be a lot of fun, uh, lighthearted, festive, uh, good fellowship. I think there's even going to be an open bar. So <laughs> it should be a lot, a lot of fun. Um, do we have any Rotary ambassadors in the room? Anyone? Okay. Well, I thought we might be pressed for time, but I think we're going to be okay. Uh, I'm sorry. This is Cheryl. I'm a Rotary ambassador. Okay. Hi, Cheryl. Um, hi. We had the district um, foundation awards last week, and there were about 130 people there. And you will hear shortly about a recognition our club received. And we just want to thank everybody. It was really fun. Uh, they had a 70s theme, and uh, it was just really fun to go. So I hope more of our club will show up next year. Thanks. Hey, thank you, Cheryl. Additionally, we will be doing the, uh, the Red Kettle for the Salvation Army again. And that will be on December the 16th. Mark Seward will be heading up our involvement uh, with the Salvation Army. So lots of opportunities to serve. And as Sandy mentioned, on doing that window on, uh, on Kenmore Boulevard, that's a lot of fun. Uh, our guest speaker today was actually there last year helping uh, my family. And then we had representation from uh, the Red Rock Club. And uh, if you've not traveled through Kenmore during the Christmas season, you owe it to yourself to go through because they do a really um, fun job of decorating those windows. So, all right, um, we are going to take some time to have our uh, happy dollars today. And I would hope, with this being the season, that. Uh, that we would have um, some folks that would are happy. So, uh, could I ask? Uh, but yeah, I was going to ask you, Bill Jr. That would be great. Twenty dollars is not enough. Thanks to everybody here. It's helped me throughout the years. So you don't know, I have five pounds. So let's just give me I 
three happy dollars. <clears throat> First one, I guess, is uh, December. I just looked. December. December twenty first, Wednesday. We're going to be doing our next <clears throat> Azure Food Bank uh, service project, uh, four thirty six thirty. And uh, I'll be putting more about that on the uh, email later. Uh, second happy dollar, uh, if you're, well, when your kids come home. Uh, unfortunately, my daughter plays soccer flagler. They lost last weekend in the regional semifinal, so she's his own person bring her, so we're happy for her. And uh, I think I'm just happy that they're here. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. So how are you feeling? That you you were a little bit under the weather, a little bit. How are you feeling? Thank you. I tested I tested negative for COVID this morning. You both make sure you were negative before we got Daisy. Tonight came down by the first cold three years. We got the second all and we got the interesting thing is we both felt the intensity of the cold. We both felt it and we both felt it in the same way. Thank you for having me. Well, good to see you. Well, it's better to go the wrong air for when you're picking somebody up and going to the flat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Really hard to get to the other. <laughs> um, so five happy blacks. If um, if you're not doing anything next Friday, December second, we're gonna have Light Boulevard, so you can come see the window oh. that Gregory will do, and all the other decorations. Lights are up and working. I think Sienna's gonna be in the courtyard next to my husband's mm. work, so something fun to do on a Friday night. Um, Thank you, Julie. Anybody else that's happy out here? Always great to see my dad. It's always great to get him seen. It's even more fun. Yeah. So, and then just really excited about having my three kids home for the holidays. Even though my one can't make it home for Thanksgiving, so we have to go see him. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. And to top it off, I have three happy dollars. And simply number one for my family, number two for my church family, who I've gotten to enjoy. And uh, then thirdly, for you all, and I really appreciate that you are active civic servants in making a difference in our wonderful city, and it's a joy to be able to partner with you. So, all right, well, at this time, you're going to be hearing from the guy who gathered the happy dollars along with uh, Thane Billow. They're going to be doing uh, the Paul Harris presentation and sharing with us, and so I'd like to invite both of you gentlemen. Uh, to come uh, and it's all yours and Bill that is, that is a kicking shirt especially when you tie it in with the socks man I am impressed I don't think I've tied a tie since last Christmas so <laughs> be, uh... all yours guys so good afternoon guys can everybody hear me okay yes good good so I, uh, I had the distinct pleasure of serving on our club's Rotary International Foundation Committee uh, with, with Mr. Bill Manby Jr. And uh, what I think is really cool about uh, Rotary, and this is both for Bill and I, it is intimate and it is personal um, because uh, Bill's dad, Bill Sr., who's with us today, um, was a very uh, upstanding and long tenured member of our club as well as uh, my dad, my grandpa so forth. So it's really cool that we can kind of continue on in this tradition, just like our dads and our grandparents. 
So our purpose today, uh, we want to take a few minutes just to report out. Um, Bill and I are asked uh, once a year to report out to you, our club members, on the good things that we're doing internationally in support of the Rotary uh, Foundation. So Bill is passing out a pamphlet. We're going to take a few minutes to go through this. And there's also a few folks uh, in the room today that we would like to, to recognize. Uh, but before I do that, I do just want to give a quick thanks to Bill, um, his uh, co-worker, Matt Slonsky, as well as uh, our club's administrator, Cheryl Warren. Um, they were a phenomenal help in gathering all this information, verifying our club's <coughs> records with RI's records. So I uh, just want to extend our thanks to them as well. All right, so let's begin. Um, so today is the official club recognition and award ceremony. And Rotary uh, International and the foundation, there's actually seven causes that we support. And in case you may have missed last year's meeting, uh, last year there were only six causes and we've added a seventh this year. So the things that we globally as Rotarians support are promoting peace, fighting disease, and specifically ending polio forever, providing clean water, sanitation, and hygiene, saving mothers and children, supporting education initiatives, growing our local economies, and protecting the environment. Our mission, which you can see on the back of your pamphlet, uh, the mission of the foundation is to help Rotarians to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace by improving health, providing quality education, improving the environment, and alleviating poverty. And you can see how the seven causes of the foundation tie in very nicely with our mission. So just a few notes, uh, these are directly from, from RI. So the collective leadership and expertise of 1.2 million Rotarians throughout the world. And that's what's really cool. We've got a big club here in Akron, we have about 130 members, but we have 1.2 million Rotarians throughout the world. And together we can tackle some of the world's biggest challenges. And those are not only global issues, but sometimes they're local issues that we pitch together to solve. We're united by common values and a vision for the future, and we sharpen our focus on specific causes that reach the communities that are most in need. So one cause that I think we're all aware of is eradicating um, disease and eradicating polio. And I would like to specifically recognize our past president, Mr. Steve Bowie, uh, because he received um, an award at the district level uh, for some of the good things that our club was able to do under his leadership. So Steve, if you'd like to come forward, I'd like to present you with this certificate. And then as you come forward, I'd like to uh, just to read this to you as well. So dear President Bowie, on behalf of the trustees of the Rotary Foundation, please accept this special banner recognition as an expression of our sincere appreciation for your generous support of the annual fund. So a couple quick stats. There are 36,000 Rotary clubs throughout the world. Only one out of 1,500 achieve the top three highest in per capita annual giving. President Steve Booth's club did that. Hmm. Only one of roughly 4,000 clubs worldwide attain status as an every Rotarian every year club. President Steve Booth's club did that. And lastly, only one in 4,500 clubs worldwide become a 100% foundation giving club. President Steve Booth's club did that. And most importantly, last year, under his leadership, our club raised $15,560 to eradicate polio. So Steve, on behalf of our club, and on behalf of the foundation, thank you and God bless you for your leadership. Thank you. Yeah, you guys can take care of it. Okay. Okay. You want to keep talking? Yeah, I'll keep talking. That's wonderful. Perfect. So thank you, Cindy, and certainly thank you, Steve. So it's really interesting is uh, polio. We as a, a club, we as uh, Rotarians, we've been working on that uh, for about 35 years now. And I believe that there are only two countries in the world uh, that still face uh, polio. So only two countries in the world, and I believe it's Afghanistan and Pakistan. Every other country has had polio eradicated. And it's because of people like you and it's because of people like Steve Bowie that we've been, we've been able to do that. Excellent. So if you'll open up your pamphlets, um, there are a few folks that we'd like to recognize. Uh, these are recipients of recognition from our club. 
And there's a few different levels of giving that I'd like to just present to you today. Um, and the good news is we're not asking for money today, so don't worry, put your checkbooks away. Uh, we're simply here to give thanks and recognize members of our club for being so generous. So we'll start out with our Arch Clump Society. Uh, you are inducted into the Arch Clump Society when your cumulative donations reach a quarter of a million dollars. Recognition includes an induction ceremony, your picture and bio in the Arch Clump Society Interactive Gallery at Rotary International Headquarters in Illinois, and you also receive uh, invitation to society events, membership pins, and you get some crystal uh, for being so generous. Our club is honored to have two members of the Arch Clump Society. Uh, Jack and Vivian Herrig are members of the Chair's Circle for lifetime giving in excess of half a million dollars. So we want to recognize and thank Jack and Vivian for everything they do. And we also would like to recognize and thank John Daly for total lifetime giving in excess of a quarter million dollars. So a few other uh, ways that you can give back, a few other folks in our club that have done this so generously are major donors. Those are individuals who have exceeded lifetime giving of $10,000. Uh, we're fortunate to have four. Mr. Stu Buchanan, the GAR Foundation, Mr. Bill Manby Sr., and Cheryl Warren. There are also Rotarians who pledge to uh, donate their resources posthumously or through their estates. Those are members of our Bequest Society as well as benefactors. Uh, the Bequest Society first, uh, when you make a commitment of future gifts of $10,000 or more to the foundation, you become a member of our Bequest Society. We are fortunate in that Stu Buchanan, Jack and Vivian, as well as Cheryl Warren have made uh, formal plans with RI to donate over $10,000 to uh, Rotary International Foundation uh, posthumously. So thank you so much for your generosity. And then we also have a number of members that are benefactors. And those are individuals who pledge at least $1,000 specifically to the endowment fund through their estates. And those members are Dr. Mark Auburn, Stu Buchanan, Mr. John Daly, Jack and Vivian Herrig, and Cheryl Warren. So let's give them a round of applause, please. Excellent. So lastly, other ways that you can donate. Yes, people just like you. Um, we have a Paul Harris Society as well as Paul Harris Fellows. So first, I want to uh, just let everybody know, what is a Paul Harris Fellow? You may have heard that they exist. We have a couple in our club. Um, you are recognized as a Paul Harris Fellow when you exceed $1,000 or more uh, to the annual fund, funding Polio Plus, or to an approved foundation grant. So it's $1,000 in giving to be recognized as a Paul Harris Fellow. And you can see in the uh, inner page on the right-hand side, you can see the number of Paul Harris Fellows that we presently uh, have on our rosters, and that includes both current and active Rotarians as well as honorary members of our club. So in total, we have 126 paid members plus six honorary members, more than half. It's presently 67 are listed as Paul Harris Fellows, and you can see the level of their commitment uh, next to their name. We also have the Paul Harris Society, and similar to Paul Harris Fellowship, a Paul Harris Society membership is a commitment to giving $1,000 per year uh, going forward. So you elect to contribute $1,000 or more annually to the annual fund, Polio Plus, or to an approved foundation grant. And we're fortunate in that our club has, I believe, 10 Paul Harris Society members. They are Mr. Steve Buchanan, John Daly, President Linda Farkas, Bill Mamby Sr., past president John Margita, past president Dr. Robert McGregor, past president Sandy Narragon, uh, past president John Reyes, as well as past president Cheryl Warren. So thank all of you for your generosity. I've got my pin on, I'm very proud of it. Yep. So uh, when you do become a Paul Harris fellow, you are recognized with a pin. And it's a gold pin with uh, Paul Harris's uh, bust on it. And uh, as you accumulate uh, stones, you get one stone for every thousand dollars you donate, you can go all the way up to a plus eight. So an individual that is a Paul Harris fellow plus eight has donated $9,000 uh, to Rotary International 
as well as someone who's just donated one thousand dollars and they're just receiving their first pin um, they would not have any stones they would be known as just a paul harris fellow so there's a few folks uh, today that i'd like to recognize that have not formally received uh, their pins uh, in person we have uh, sandy narragon receiving her paul harris fellow plus seven pin And Bill does have your pin for you. Thank you so much, Sandy. Uh, with us online today. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, with us online today, we have Terry Dalton. Um, Terry Dalton is receiving his Paul Harris Fellow plus two today for $3,000 in giving. So thank you, Terry. Okay. So uh, what's next? If you are uh, subscribed to the Paul Harris Society, uh, you are set to make your donations in December. So right before year end, uh, it's done automatically through credit card. Uh, so we want to thank everyone for their continued support uh, in, at year end. Uh, going forward, if any of you would like more information, uh, best thing to do is to speak directly with uh, Bill or myself. Uh, we're certainly not here to uh, ask for you to donate today, um, but I think what you uh, can see and what's evidence is the fact that our club is extraordinarily generous both locally and worldwide and it's certainly something that we appreciate as well as our friends throughout the world appreciate so on behalf of bill and i as well as a uh, grateful rotary foundation uh, report uh, we just want to let you guys know how much we appreciate you god bless you and thanks for everything Thank you very much, Thane, and thank you, uh, Bill Jr. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the time before I introduce today's speaker, and uh, hey, Bill Senior, I'd like you to stand if you would please. I want us to really uh, honor and recognize the tremendous service he has done for many many years on behalf of the Paul Harris. Um, foundation and and I just want to say on behalf of our club thank you and and thank you also that you've been able to pass it on uh, rightly to your wonderful son but thank you for the tremendous work that you have done for our club and for the foundation so God bless you all right miss Susan you have a comment? Yes, I missed half a dollar, but I just wanted to say that um, I attended the uh, District Foundation Gala, and I was on Thursday night with the exchange students, and I was really proud to be a member of the Rotary Club of Akron because of these people who do district law that they uh, they gave us our place in the district, and it was just a very about feeling. So thank you all. Well, thank you for sharing that. I'm going to invite today's uh, guest speaker, who actually is one of us, uh, Liv. Would you come on up? This is Liv Pyle, and she's going to be sharing with us. I'm going to give you her formal um, position. Come here. She is the uh, Senior District Executive at the Great Trail Council of the Boy Scouts of America, and she's a graduate of Kent State. I want to tell you, she was Rotarian before she came to us. She was serving in Kent, correct? And boy, oh boy, um, she hit the ground running, and she hasn't stopped. She has been such a servant in so many different ways, and... Whenever we rightly have been able to approach her and ask her to consider something, she's in. And so, uh, so when she speaks and when she shares, it comes out of the authority of already being very deeply and intimately in the flow of service. So thank you for all that you do, dear. So we look forward to what you have to share. She's going to be really hard because I like to dance around a little bit when I do presentations. 
So um, I don't have a PowerPoint today, but instead, if you look on the tables before I start, um, I put out some photos of some of my most meaningful uh, programs I've been involved with in scouting so far. Uh, take a look, if you flip them over, it has a name of the event. I'm gonna reference a couple of them through the presentation, um, but it just has the name of it, what we did. You might be like, what is a chariot race? Well, I can tell you later if you ask me. But uh, so before you jump in, um, I do want to tell you guys, I'm not here today to tell you all about the patches and campfires that we do that you probably know about. Uh, but first, I want to start by asking you guys, how many of you in the audience have a connection to scouting, whether you are a parent or you're in the program yourself, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, I don't care, scouting is scouting, um, or even if you're a donor. So almost everybody. So I'm super impressed. Thank you, guys. Uh, and. Um, when you think of scouting, what words come to mind? Like, just throw them out there. Outdoors. Outdoors. Adventure. Adventure. Evil Scouts. Evil Scouts. Friends. Friends. Oh, that's a nice one. Cookies. Cookies. <laughs> that's the Girl Scouts. Uh, <laughs> but um, so kind of what I expected, more of outdoorsy, adventurous words, right? Um, and that's so much of what people think when I meet them and for the first time they're like, what do you do? And I say, look at the Boy Scouts, like, oh yeah, yeah, I know what that is. And I'm like, but you don't know. Like, we do so many cool things that you don't know about and I never get the chance to tell people about some of the background stuff that we talk about in the world of scouting that often don't get to leave those walls because we just don't have the marketing power to do that. So um, I'm going to go over kind of the, I don't want to say boring stuff, but the traditional stuff that you've probably already heard of before. And then I want to jump into some of the really cool stuff that we've been working on behind the scenes. So as most of you probably know, um, or at least have an idea, scouting is all about making kids good people in society. Our mission is to prepare young people to make ethical and moral decisions over their lifetime. And that's all about really making them good people. We take what we teach them, they take it in the world, and they make the world a better place. That's ultimately what we're up to. Yeah, we do a lot of camping and adventure, no cookies, but we do popcorn. Uh, but that's basically what we do. I'm sure you guys had a, a decent idea of what that is. But locally, the Great Trail Council, which is kind of like our local chapter of the Boy Scouts, we serve um, all the way from Mahoning County, Trumbull, Portage, Summit, and Medina County. We serve over 6,000 families and growing. Uh, fun little fact, actually in the community of Akron and our service area, which we call the Canal District that encompasses Akron, uh, we actually just hit membership growth last week. So we are super excited. That means more kids are in scouting uh, compared to last year and a few years back. So more kids are being positively impacted by our program. Um, so our traditional program, I actually really want to touch on uh, a program that most people are unfamiliar with, but I'm going to run through the traditional. So at least like if I reference it, you know what I'm saying because as someone who was never in the Boy Scouts as a kid, it was really hard to like pick up all the scouting jargon. If you were in scouting, you know we're gonna, I'm going to say acronyms and things that make zero sense to any lay people. But um, So I'm going to run through it real quick. Uh, we have our first program, which is Cub Scouts. That's our program through, for um, K through five. Uh, that is co-ed. And then we have our Scouts BSA program, which many people used to know of as the Boy Scouts program. Uh, in 2019, which was actually the year I got hired, we became an entirely co-ed program, uh, which was really cool to be a part of that when we went through the transition. We did have a lot of people who were like, oh, the two need to be separate. And I, and I understand that because of, you know, kids are kids and they can be silly and sometimes being apart can actually benefit them. Uh, but it was really neat to be a part of that journey when we went through it as an organization nationally. But um, so our Scouts USA program is for 11 to 17 year olds. We have a program called Venturing. Has anyone heard of Venturing? Probably, okay. Venturing is kind of like the extension on the Boy Scout program. It's for the high adventure kids, the ones who leave Scouts BSA and say, you know, what do I really want to do right now? I want to go on a backpack trip for like 30 days and head out west and do something like that. Those groups aren't super popular, to be honest. Um, that's kind of a small program area of ours, but um, there are kids out there that like to find other groups of kids that like doing that. And we do that. That's one of our five programs. Uh, we also have a program called uh, Sea Scouting. Has anyone heard of that? Yeah? Okay. So sea scouting is basically scouting on water. Uh, it's not very popular. It's a program that actually almost went away nationally uh, just last year, but we decided to keep it. We have one ship that the Great Trail Council oversees, and it's actually in uh, Portage Lakes. And for you guys who might not know what that means, a ship is basically the sea scouting equivalent to a Boy Scout troop. 
So um, we have that out there. It's really cool. They go kayaking, canoeing. Uh, they have the same kind of leadership roles that scouting does, but just on a ship rather than in a campsite. Uh, then we have probably my favorite program uh, that we over or that we oversee as a council. It's called Exploring. Uh, I will kind of uh, preface this with what I first was going to do this presentation. I actually had a different job at the Great Trail Council. Now my job will actually be overseeing this program. Uh, but exploring is our workforce development arm of the Boy Scouts, which I don't know about all of you, but I feel this kind of uh, you know change in society where the trades are finally getting the credit they're due, and kids are finally realizing the importance of maybe not going to college, but um, rather finding their career somewhere in whether it's um, welding or um, police work or something like that. So we realize as an organization, well. Um, well, so Exploring is this great program that started in the 50s because we realized students were missing that connection between school and career, and that's how it was really born, and I'm sure that's how our technical career schools were started, but um, Exploring is really our way that we looked, in, especially in the Akron community, we said, okay, so we have these great high schools, right, that these career academies where kids actually have the opportunity to go through a normal high school experience rather than like a technical school style uh, format. But the problem is, is that our middle schoolers are kind of leaving middle school and being like, okay, great, I think I'm going to go do, um, oh gosh, like what is the hospitality management? I think that's what I might want to do, even though they've maybe had no experience in that field. It's just something they're interested in. So what we decided as an organization, and after about four or five years of fighting with APS, uh, we finally uh, came to an agreement with the Akron School District and they've incorporated our exploring program in the school. So what that means is we're able to kind of bridge that gap between middle school and high school, which is really neat because now kids will actually be able to make the most of their high school experience going to a career academy because they'll be able to have hands-on experiences. So exploring is really about connecting business people like you guys um, who trades, uh, can benefit students, uh, especially with experiences they might not be getting in school or at home. And we have people like you come into the school uh, about four times um, a month, and it's divided up by basically like career fields. So we have a, um, oh goodness, we have First Energy come in, we have Goodyear come in. They'll come in and they'll actually work with their students in the after school program, totally free to them. And they'll come in and talk about the trades. So um, they'll get to do hands-on experiences. We don't want it to be school after school because that sucks. Uh, but yeah, so they'll come in and they'll teach something. One thing that APS is looking for, which I will look to all of you, is uh, they've requested that we start teaching our students more soft skills. So things like leadership and um, really just professionalism. Not that, you know, we at the Boy Scouts don't know how to do that stuff, but um, we love people like you that are actually professionals in the field to come in. Um, like, for example, we had Judge John Oldham come in and talk to the kids about, hey, here's how to be a good citizen, and if you mess up, here's what might happen. So just little things like that. It doesn't have to be anything major, but it's something that we've kind of fallen short on, um, but we're trying to make some connections with you guys in the community to see who can come in and help our students in APS. Uh, so the program is kind of divided up in our exploring clubs, which is what I was just referencing with the Akron Public School District. That's actually for our middle age uh, or our, uh, middle school age kids. Then we have our exploring posts, which is like the equivalent of a Boy Scout troop. Um, we have those, which is when we actually have a program at the organization site. So for example, Goodyear has had an exploring post for about 20 years. Uh, if you guys were at the Oh goodness, what, what do we call it? The scholarship dinner for Rotary this past spring. We had two students that were actually uh, in that club. They had no idea it was Boy Scouts because we often keep the two programs separate. But when we were talking about their accomplishments, we mentioned, oh, they're in the Goodyear Exploring Post. And I'm in the background like, yeah, that's us. But they didn't know. But still, it was, um, we have kids who are uh, going through an engineering program there. We also have the Akron Fire Department who's had a post for 20 plus years where kids are going in and out, learning about police work. Uh, many of our organizations actually use it as a recruitment tool for finding future employers or employees, uh, especially fire and uh, police work. It's very difficult out there to find people who want to do it. 
Uh, so having students come in and actually become familiar with the program hands-on and get to make connections. I think for me, one of the most important things is finding people who will be a reference for them one day. Uh, so often we can connect kids to the right people, but if they don't get a chance to know them and get to see their work, if they're not going to be the same level of reference as someone who's going to be working with them hands-on every week through an exploring program. Uh, one of the things I always tell our explorers is, hey, every time you come to a meeting, it is an interview. You have to have that mindset. Like this could be your employer down the road if you play your cards right. Um, but exploring is a huge program of ours, and I'm super excited to see where it goes because I think it has almost limitless potential. Um, only because think of all of our community uh, leaders out there who have resources that our kids could use. So if you think you're one of those, please connect with me. We'd love to have you in a program. Uh, so outside of program. I have some just fun things I like to talk about. Uh, one program that we're actually piloting before I forget to mention it is, uh, we call it Build Your Adventure Family Scouting. So scouting has always been for families. However, we realized actually with the help of my volunteers, we sat down and said, okay, well, why can't we get scouting in the city of Akron? Why is it the lowest served community in the entire area that we cover as a council? And we realized that for years and years, and I, I felt that coming into the organization with some of the ways of tradition we had, but one of the things we realized was we are asking everybody to fit into our program. We're not trying to fit our program around the people. So what we decided was um, we're going to pilot a new program. It should be starting up probably the beginning of next year and um, something entirely different that's not national level um, but it'll be a program where instead of parents volunteering as probably some of you have we will have volunteers who are unrelated to that program itself or to those families come in and actually lead the program for us one of the barriers we realized is kids in akron might not have nuclear families they might not have two parents at home that can give up hours every week to run a scouting program that's what we currently ask and Kind of with the decline of volunteerism, at least in our world, we just can't do it anymore. But we still want to serve the kids. We know how valuable our program is, but we can't get it to them. So um, we're still currently looking for a location, kind of a safe place. Uh, we've identified the neighborhood of Middlebury to be our first pilot, um, only because we have not had scouting there in probably 15 years. So we said, where's our best area? Let's try Middlebury. Um, I know we have great partners out there, like Doug's son, that are doing good work, and we're hoping we can make some kind of magic happen, or magic happen there. Um, we really wanted to do North Hill next and possibly Kenmore, uh, but we're going to see how that goes. And uh, we're hoping as a council that if it does work, we can replicate it and take it to other neighborhoods and um, actually try to have scouting in neighborhoods that haven't for years. Um, some other things we're doing is on the table, there are, I think, two pictures of girls that are scouting. Uh, we ran an event in 2021 called Her Next Adventure, which was got some, uh, we got some criticism for that uh, because we were running an event just for women in scouting, but Her Next Adventure was basically an introductory event to the Scouts PSA program for girls. In 2019, when we welcomed them to our program, we were like, hey, come on in, join this thing that you don't know anything about. And we stood there for a while and we're like, why aren't the girls coming? Why aren't they joining? And in some meeting, we all kind of looked at each other like, well, has anyone even tried to recruit them in a way that maybe would work? So um, we decided as a council that we needed to make a concerted effort to welcome women to our program. And that was how Her Next Adventure was born. Uh, it was an event that was entirely led by girls in our program because we thought, what better way to showcase what the program does than have the girls run it themselves. So new girls who were interested in our program, along with girls that were in our Cub Scout, Cub Scout age program, were able to come to this at our Camp Manitoc which, by the way, is celebrating its 100th anniversary next year. So uh, listen for uh, more information on that because it will be a huge thing for us. Um, it'll be our second camp that has hit 100 years. But um, our program is where girls could actually come to camp and participate in hands-on activities like archery. We had BB guns. We had um, fire building, Dutch oven cooking, rock climbing, where the girls could actually get hands-on experiences and 
try out the scouting program before they decided to come and actually join. Because uh, we thought, all right, so there's Girl Scout program, which we highly respect, but it is slightly different than the Boy Scout program. So we don't know what people's perception of our program is. So we thought what better way than to just bring them to camp and give them a try themselves. So that was really great. We actually then did the event again in 2022. Uh, we had some of the guys who uh, were asking us, well, why don't you do this for the guys? And I mean no disrespect when I say this, but we said, you have had this program for 100 plus years. Can we have one day? So uh, they gave it to us. But uh, in 2023, we will be changing the event uh, to be known as the next adventure, which will include guys. Um, because we noticed in our organization, we were struggling a little bit with retention from our Cub Scout age program to our Scouts VSA age program. So uh, we decided, though, the committee of women in the Boy Scouts, they were fighting it hard. We uh, finally gave up and said, this is probably what's better for all. Uh, and then another thing on your table is a picture that is from our event called Scouting for Food. Scouting for Food is our five county wide food drive that we run every year. We have just kind of revamped it after it being gone for 15 years. So it's been kind of hard to get traction, but uh, we ran that in 2022, it was incredible. Uh, since we do cover two food banks in our council, uh, part of the food went to Second Harvest Food Bank of Mahoney Valley, and part of it went to the African Food Bank, which is a huge partner of ours because we do multiple events there and they let us host them for free. Um, and then what other things do I have there? We have a chariot race, which was super fun. That was actually hosted in West Akron. That was when our kids got to uh, grab a cardboard box, uh, pick two people to drag the cardboard box, attach ropes to it, uh, decorate it, and then race other groups of scouts on the ground. We call it a chariot race. We put a towel underneath the box and they drag the kids around a gymnasium. It's really funny. It was my favorite event. And then they would make a turn and the kids would like screw it out of the side of the box. It was, Fantastic. I wish I had a video. We actually had a kid. I gave him my phone and he, he was holding it while he was in the chariot. You could see him like, it, it was nuts. But uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, what else do I have on there? We also have, oh, something cool that we do is called the Adaptation Inclusion Diversity Committee. Uh, something we've realized over the years is um, we have a lot of kids with autism that find a home in our program. So we actually have this committee known as the Adaptation Inclusion Diversity Committee. That's all about making sure every child, no matter culture, ability level, um, whatever it is, can find a home in scouting. Because we've always had this box of like, hey, come fit in this, but not every kid does. So this committee is another effort to actually make that possible. Uh, we have on the table, there's a picture of one of our scouts that's in a, a pack out of the First Baptist Church in West Akron. He is in a wheelchair and by partnering with another organization, they created a car that the scout could actually use to get around camp uh, because he couldn't walk. So it'll handle the terrain of camp, it'll get him around. We call it the wild thing. Uh, it's really cool, but uh, we're actually hoping to find funding for a car that is for our scouts BSA age kids. Right now, the only one we have is for kids that are 90 pounds or below. So we can't, once a kid is, you know, goes beyond that weight, we don't have the same kind of transportation for them. Um, but that's one thing we're doing. And I think that was, that was about it. I'm trying to think about the little random things we do that nobody's ever heard about. But yeah, thank you guys. Okay. So. I don't think I realized until my boys were in Scouts that it's really a boy-led organization. So I mean, the leaders are there, Boys are managing other boys. I mean, it really teaches them some leadership skills. And, and they kind of, at least in our troop, they every six months would have a different uh, senior patrol leader than another patrol leader. I don't know exactly. But um, I, you know, I, I just think it's a great experience for them. It's not like Cub Scouts where it's just the leader leading. It's, it's the kids leading and then the, the leader making sure the kids are leading okay. It's actually kind of crazy. Uh, they offer a training called Wood Badge. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it, but Wood Badge is the highest level training you can get as an adult volunteer. And it actually sets you in the spot of being a scout. So I just went through it recently, just to get a little bit of perspective on what I'm asking volunteers to do. But it's two weekends long. You start the weekend as a Cub Scout, and then you move your way into the Scouts VSA program. And like, for example, I was a patrol leader for an entire day. 
which doesn't sound that hard, but for like 12 hours, I was trying to lead four other adults to do the things we had to do, and it was so hard. Like, I, they kept going on a tangent, and I'm like, come back, we need to get this thing done by five o'clock, and then they'd go. I was like, how do kids do this? I, it gave me a lot of perspective. It's hard. So what we're asking our kids to do in the program, it, it really does build them to be better leaders because it's a challenge. So whoever wants to. Just a quick, you know, again, I'm a little confused. If there's still Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, Oh yeah. So no, we are still separate organizations. If you ask us that work for the Boy Scouts, we have different opinions on it, and you know, part of me would love to see us just doing one thing. However, we both do different things. We're still considered the Boy Scouts of America. However, we have changed our Boy Scout program, which is for the 11 to 17 year olds. We now call it Scouts BSA because we include girls. But totally separate organizations. They do one thing, we do another. But the Boy Scouts are now co-ed. No, so the girls actually, so not to like do a little or too much history for you guys, uh, girls have actually been in the Boy Scouts of America since about the 70s. So we created Exploring in like 1950, 1960. That was just a boy program. And then about 10 years later, we said, why don't we include girls in this? So girls have been in it for a number of years. They're just not in the traditional side of scouting, so nobody would talk about it. So people were like, girls are in scouting or Boy Scouts for the first time ever. And we're like, mm -hmm, yay, but also they were in it a long time. So yeah. Girl Scouts is still separate. Still separate, yeah. People often, like when I go places, they'll introduce me as a Girl Scout person, and I'm like, eh, I'm scouting, scouting, but I'll take it. So you, you don't have any combined girls and boys and girls. We do. So, yeah, I'm sorry. That's why I'm like, how do I sum up every little weird, crazy part of this organization, even with all the changes that we're doing nationally? So, Cub Scout program, it is together. So, boys and girls scout together. Then, as they move into the Scouts VSA program, which is like when they turn 10, 11, 12 ish time frame, uh, really once they reach sixth grade, they enter a troop. And we have boy troops and we have girl troops, totally separate. Um, now, if you go through our venturing program, that has been co-ed, they scout together, um, and so is exploring. They, girls and boys are totally together. We'll take one more question if there are any others. Yeah, um, these, uh, training, um, if someone just wants to learn, like I grew up, my parents were so I'm not Oh yeah, for sure. So um, we actually have a lot of kids, like for example, we just started uh, a fire post through the Green Fire Department. We started that and we have lots of kids that are, some of them are from Portage Lakes Career Center who are in the fire academy. And then we also have students that were just like, I don't know if this is what I want to do, but I want to do it. And especially for the EPS kids in the middle schools, they actually just come in and give it a shot. I mean, I've seen kids in all of the different sessions we run between uh, engineering to nursing to becoming a firefighter. That same kid is in all three just to try to give it a shot. Uh, I was someone who grew up, I grew up in Trumbull County, and if any of you are familiar with Trumbull County, there's not a whole lot out there in terms of, I mean, at least in the area that I grew up in. And blue collar workers, that's where all of the par my parents, my friends' parents, everyone. So um, you either have the chance, the very small chance of going to college. For example, I was like one of five kids from my graduating class that went to college, or they're gonna go into trades. So the more we can give kid kids those hands-on experiences, even if to find out that it's not what they wanna do, we hope we can give kids that opportunity through exploring. I just have one comment, I realize um, so there is an equal dinner on March 19th, and we're looking for volunteers to. So I, oh, I just want to join the board. Oh, I was like, hello. Uh, and we're looking for volunteers. So the speaker at the equal dinner is Jimmy Gray. Wow. Yeah, wow. We're looking for volunteers to sponsor an equal. It would be $100, and you would go to dinner with the eagle. So that would be awesome. both the two dinners. And uh, we need to cover about 100 eagles because we're a little behind because of COVID. Uh, <coughs> Okay. So that's, I mean, there's time to connect. Yeah. And if you want, if you want to do the donation today, there are QR codes on all the tables. So uh, 
Feel free, thank you. Stay, stay right here for a second. On behalf of President Linda and our Rotary Club, we have a little gift for you. And we're also going to have you um, full for today's raffle. And as you're doing that, and we'll have you read it. Thank you. That was an outstanding presentation and very, very informative. <laughs> so you can read the number, the winning number. All right. Uh, 228-897. All right, Julie. Yeah. And you get the draw for the Joker. All right. Well, our meeting is officially over and have a fabulous Thanksgiving.